TNT Hoops.
Boogie Ellison, Precious Achu. Questions? Good to know, bro. For a long time. Uh, Precious, you had a 24, you had a double double today, 24 points, 12 rebounds. Um, how does it feel to be on the winning side of one of these close games that you all have down the stretch? And how will it prepare you for the last four games of the regular season? Um, in the order, I just kept reminding the guys that pretty much all the games we've lost so far, all year besides Tulsa, we've been in the game until about seven minutes mark, you know, from the second half. And that's how we kind of just close the game. We just couldn't execute going down the stretch. So when he got about five, three, you know, I just kept reminding the guys it was winning time. And we just had to figure out how to close games and come out with a win. So that's what we um, that's what we focused on today in the last thirty minutes. Precious, you said after UConn you don't want to use youth as an excuse anymore that you want to just figure out a way to win these games. What was the difference? What what, what went differently this time? that didn't go well the first couple of times? Um, absolutely. I feel like, me personally, I don't want to keep using the same excuse in terms of just saying um, we're too young. We, we have about five games to play, I believe. And we can't keep saying this, using the same excuses. This is about to be a lot of things. Freshmen at this point have to become sophomores, and sophomores have to become juniors, and just so on. Um, it's just at that point of the season where the guys have to learn from their mistakes and grow, and eventually get things to go the way they're supposed to go from the beginning. Boogie, for you, you seem a lot more comfortable out there in the last couple of games. What has changed for you mentally and on the court? Uh, just watching a lot of film, understanding where the defense is going to be, and just understanding the game, just watching a lot of film for me. Uh, it, it was real, really just film and seeing where everything is on the floor and stuff like that. Uh. Precious. You said you were tired of uh, didn't want to use that as an excuse. Is that just something you felt, or is that like a message that you like spread around the locker room? Um, for me, team? that was just me personally. I haven't really spoken to my teammates about this. Um, you know, after the after the past couple of losses we have, I went back. You know, I thought about it. And my time, I'm a, I love to win a lot. I'm sure everybody does, but it really bothers me when I lose. And I just went into this, you know. Mood where I was just thinking a lot and just thinking what well, well, we could have done better. You know, every play I could literally mention every play that went down against UConn and the, the game prior before. It's just that's the way I am. So I was thinking about every play and everything that went down. It's just like going through my head, and I was just like the whole "be too young" excuse is just it's too much for me at this point. I don't want people to keep saying I'm young. You know, we played against, so we're saying, and we've played against a lot of teams in this conference. I don't think it's a lot of teams is that better than us. So I just feel like, obviously, it's a, it comes down to experience sometimes, but we just have to figure it out, like I said, um, individually and collectively as a group. <coughs> Boogie, some big shots down the stretch for you. There was a three-pointer that broke a tie, and then a minute or so later, you hit a, a runner that, that broke the tie for good. So if you could just sort of take us through that, um, those couple of shots, and, and also, I mean, not many guys, you know, get to take shots that late in games. I mean, was that were those plays drawn up for you? Uh, no, I just went with the flow of the game, and I did what I, what I had to do to, to help my team win. You know, if someone was open, I would have made the right play, but I had to make the play to score since that was the right play. So just coach trust me and, and the hard work that I put in the gym, so he, he's okay with that. Me taking the shots. This is for either one of you guys. What was the chemistry going to do into today's game between the team and this one, between the coaches and you? Um, I feel like we've had the same chemistry coming down, you know, pretty much every game. We, we, we're the same team, you know, win or lose. It was just today we, we were more desperate to win because of the outcome of the past three games. We were just more hungry, hungrier to get a win today. So we went out there, we played harder. And then when it came down to the last three minutes stretch, like I said, we got in the hole and everybody really wanted to win. Everybody was desperate and we all locked in and executed to going down the stretch. Buggy, do you feel more comfortable with the ball in your hands or working all, being an all-ball guard? Because it seems like you've had the ball in your hands a lot more lately and you've been more, more effective. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll play wherever coach puts me, so I can play on the ball or off the ball. So just just whatever coach has me, it, it's good. Uh, this will be for you. How do you keep 
that same level of desperation or intensity even after like putting the break on the losing streak? Um, <laughs> um, I think it's really obvious at this point where you know we stand as a team and we go down with seven plays coming to the season. So I, I don't think anyone needs to motivate motivate us as a group or you know we don't need any outside motivation. We are we're desperate individually and collectively, like I said, um, because we know where we at and we just, we're trying to get into the tournament. So I think every game going down the stretch, we're gonna play every game with that level of desperation. Some guys say they look at the standings and stuff all the time. So what about you guys? I mean, right now I'm just I'm just focusing on us being together and winning as much as possible. We gotta win every game. That's all that matters is us win, us winning. None of that stuff matters if we don't win. Very happy to get a win. Um, had big leads both times and just stopped doing the things that we needed to do to uh, to push the lead out further. It just seems like once we get a lead, guys start, they start trying things. And, um, you know, just, you know, from these games, I'm hoping that we're learning from them and um, that we can, we can finish games out stronger than we did tonight, but definitely very happy to get a win. Patty, you said, yesterday that uh, it's time to just get it done and figure it out. There's no more excuses anymore. Do you think you were able to accomplish that even if it was a little rocky there? Yeah, as long as we get a win, it's by any means necessary. It doesn't matter if it's by one or by 30. I would have loved to, I would have, loved to have come out at a 20, 25 point win and made a statement after losing three in a row, but just getting a win is statement enough. I mean, it's, it's tough to win in this league. Patty, we saw an impressive press early on and had them railing a little bit. Was there something in the film you saw that you could press this team? Also, is that something that you can use moving forward? And how tough is it with, with the numbers, the depth not there anymore? Yeah, it's something that uh, I saw on film that we could, we could rattle them. But uh, it's the timing on the press. Uh, in the beginning, we, we did the press while we were putting pressure on the ball and speeding them up. Then for like a three minute span, we just started running towards the ball. And that's not how we want to do it. That's why we really started faltering it. But yeah, we want to do that more. But it's almost like a, um, a press where you can't, they can't see you coming. You know, you pressure the ball, you run them up the sideline, then the guy comes from behind the play and traps and everybody else is ready. If you just run at them like we did for about three minutes and they capitalized on us in that three minutes, then they're just going to throw the ball over our head and advance the ball and then have, uh, have, uh, have numbers on the offensive end in their favor. So yeah, it's something that I want to continue to do. But with a young team, you kind of do it when they want to do it instead of how we were supposed to do it. Uh, Coach, um, in terms of your team's perimeter defense, you did a superb job tonight, four, forcing ECU to shoot 420 from the three-point line. Can you go into that and, tell, and explain how your team is so good defensively on the perimeter? Well, I mean, we focus on it. We, we understand who the shooters are and who the drivers are. In one sense, that's why we, we call it the three-point line. But also, um, you know, it's just understanding who we want to have the ball and, 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 when, and when they um, and, and, and when to go out and close out. So basically, um, they weren't a really good three-point shooting team. The only kid was uh, JJ Miles. Everybody else was kind of okay, and uh, we we did we did the job that we were supposed to. Even though JJ still got a couple open looks, he was the guy that we were locked we were really locked in on. Penny, it doesn't. You have the game felt like in hand. Does it drive you insane that your players start doing the stuff they start doing? And is there anything that you can do to get them to retain focus it, throughout? It, it, it's really frustrating. It's baffling because that's all we talk about is when we get a lead, this is what we want to do. And it just seemed like they just think, well, we got the lead. Now it's time to start trying things. It's very frustrating to me because we've, we've had an opportunity to win games and we've done that and we've had big leads that we've relinquished at home and end up losing games because of those reasons. It just seems like they don't understand that to keep doing the same thing over and over again, it's like they have to do something different and it's very frustrating. Uh, Coach, you chalk a lot of the mistakes or whatever uh, up to their youth and being freshmen. Uh, Precious was just in here and said that he doesn't like, like, he doesn't think that's like a valid reason for a lot of the mistakes that they made. Have you seen a shift in his mindset, I guess, as far as that goes, owning up to more of the uh, 
things that. Yeah, well, we're all at that point right now. That's why it's so frustrating when it starts to go the other way. We know when we get a lead how we got it. We know that we have to start taking care of the ball and running sets and what we need to look for. And he's one of the main guys that's in the huddle saying the right things like the coaches are saying. Hey, we don't need that shot. We don't need that pass. Let's just take the high percentage shot or take make the pass go to the person that it's supposed to go to. It just seems like guys start looking for more. And uh, Precious is one of the guys that's in the huddle that's definitely saying, let's just, you know, get a stop and let's just play simple basketball. Fanny, uh, you know, kind of like you were saying, it seems like under six minutes left in the second half, you were watching the, the same movie over again. What was the, the difference? What, what, what was the difference in the final half here? Uh, the difference in the final half, half is if we won, we made winning plays at the end like other teams have made on us. And we got stops and then we scored. Other teams have done that to us. Cincinnati did that to us and UConn did that to us. The difference was we made our shots and made winning plays in the defensive end. Coming down the stretch here and uh, you know, you're fighting to get that first round of the in the conference tournament. Um, how much do you want the guys aware of that, cognizant of that? And how much do you want them to just put blinders on and do, you know, focus on what's in front of them. You know, I'd rather them focus on what's in front of them, but with social media, with, with understanding the standings and, and understanding how it goes, they're very aware. But I'd rather them go one game at a time and not really look ahead because it's hard enough to win a game. We were on a three-game losing streak, and we were in all three to win the game and didn't. We just got to lock in on, on, our small, on the small things, but not worry about trying to get a first round by, but buying into what we need to do, and I think it'll take care of itself. Um, Coach, with some of these tough games coming up, especially on Saturday, um, is it is there something that can be done or something that you might, uh, hasn't been used in the bag of tricks necessarily to try to prevent <laughs> some of these second half lapses when you have less room for error against a team like Houston? Yeah, Houston is going to put you in a position that you're going to be very uncomfortable the entire game, especially if you're out there playing nonchalant and not meeting the challenge. And I think that, oddly enough, that they will meet that challenge more. They, Houston is one of those teams that will bring the best out of the guys. So I think that understanding that, that they'll be more careful, they'll be more understanding that this is the best team in our league, and how they play is very aggressive, and I think they'll be looking forward to that. So I think that we'll be able to get in their, in their heads totally this week before the game on Saturday, the rest of the week, and that they'll be ready. Penny, does it feel like it's been a really long time since you won a game, and what is the winning feeling like after snapping a losing streak? Yeah, you know, it was, it's, it's, it's been hard because you lose three close games. You lose to South Florida at home. Um, you lose on the road at Cincinnati and at UConn. And it just seems like, man, you just got to get back off that, get off the losing streak and get back on a winning streak. And it feels really good, honestly, because we've been working hard enough to get wins. We just haven't been able to close games and tonight we close one. Coach, I, um, at least you that your team has had over these last few games, and really over the season, is um, turnovers. Um, your team had nine in that first half, only four in the second half. What did your team do differently to transition from the first to the second? Well, we just started running more sets, and they stopped taking chances. Like, they just want to take chances at the wrong time. That's just a big, the biggest thing I see when I watch film. We just do some stuff to ourselves, self-inflicting wounds that just don't make any sense to me at the time that they try to do them. And um, no matter how much film we watch, they just, at some point in the game, everything's going good, and they'll go, you know what, I want to try this. But in the second half, we were just more controlled because we ran the offense better. Boogie well, hit some big shots tonight down the stretch. Does that give you um, some more confidence in him? I mean, it seems like these last few games, you've kind of been searching for that guy mm -hmm. to give you that clutch ability. He, tonight he hit a big three, and then he hit a, uh, a runner down the lane that, that broke the tie for good. So. Yeah, you know, we, we definitely need that guy to emerge uh, from the guard spot. Uh, Boogie has been doing a great job with that. And when you see that, you need a go-to guy. You look at all these other teams, they got a guy that they can go to and get an automatic basket. You know, with Precious, they're loading up on him down on the box. With Boogie, he can get going on the perimeter, one-on-one -on -one and things of that nature, kind of like Jeremiah could last year. Uh, so he's a younger version that has done that in his career in high school, but just kind of deferred a lot since he's come here. And plus, he was in, uh, in a slump. But it is good seeing him emerge as a guy that can knock down those shots in, in crunch time. We've got time for one more. Yeah, Penny, have you received any type of uh, progress report or update on, on DJ's status from your medical staff? Uh, yeah, they're just saying he's, 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 a, he's coming along, he's playing, and um, that uh, it's looking more like the six weeks um, before he gets there. I, just, I, I see him walking better. So something, maybe they're, uh, 
Um, they're just they're just keeping it under wraps for themselves, and then if he comes back earlier, then he does. But right now, it's still six weeks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.